far they have delivered. Absolutely. Adair County, uh, from the beginning of the year, seems like the team to beat in the district. If it's not Franklin Simpson, it's Adair County. So, I mean, this is it's, it's kind of crazy to say that this could be uh, play the district for the district championship of the first district game. But, I mean, we could be. I mean, there's a lot more season to play and a lot more football to play. But this is definitely a very, very big opening district game for Franklin Simpson. We'll talk about it more as our pregame show goes on. But, ironically enough, this is a much different Adair County team than it was at the beginning of the season. But it's a much more similar Adair County team to what the Wildcats saw last season. They are without star quarterback Easton Jesse, who had transferred in from Glasgow, had an amazing start to the year, nearly 400 yards through his first two games with three touchdowns over that stretch. Goes down with a season-ending injury. Their last time eight timeout, still able to pick up a win in a shortened game against LaRue County, but it will be, again, the Lane Grant Show, as we have gotten very familiar with, with Adair County. We got to see it firsthand last year, and he's gotten even better in this year, his senior season, but a big weight on his shoulders tonight to carry the load against this Franklin Simpson team hungry to get back on track. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we take a look back at that loss for Franklin Simpson against Allen County Scottsville. We'll chat with Coach Cheney about that game as well and dive in more to this Adair County team coming in at 3-0 and for the second straight season. You are listening to Franklin Simpson football on the road at Adair County on 92.3 WFKN. Franklin Simpson football team is getting set to open district play on the road against an undefeated and very capable Adair County Indian squad. Tyler Eaton joined by Tyler Arterburn up in the press box. We're about 23 minutes out from kickoff here at Adair County. It's going to be a little bit of a different schedule from normal. They're doing a much earlier national anthem than we're used to. So in the next segment, we'll go ahead and kick it to our coach interview with Coach Cheney. So certainly stick around for that. He'll tell you much more about that game last week against Allen County Scottsville. But, Tyler, for our case, let's go ahead and take a look back at it quickly. The Wildcats only gave up 255 total yards but lost that game 36-22, to giving up six touchdowns. And if they had a kicker, they would have been just the fourth team to score 40 or more against Coach Cheney. The Patriots dominated 
big plays. They had a 100-yard pick, six, a punt return touchdown that was waved off due to a penalty, both of those from Deontay Granger. And despite Franklin Simpson picking off three passes through three of their own interceptions, and if you go back last year against ACS, that's how the Cats tilted things in their favor with those big plays, with those turnovers. It was right down the middle against ACS, and that was not in Franklin Simpson's favor. Absolutely not. I mean, that was a game of turnovers and you know, Franklin Simpson, it was, uh, it, Allen County was able to return uh, the interceptions farther, and that's what told the story of the game. National Anthem on the way, so we'll step away. When we come back, you'll hear from Coach Chaney and his thoughts about that game last week.
Oh, yeah, we're live just on. So this is a Channel 9 exclusive. Do you want to tell them what you got at Bucky's? Do they hear the echo, too? I don't know. No. All right. You got uh, the chopped brisket. You go with the OG, uh, the OG sandwich and uh, mix it up with a sliced turkey. I got a chicken and cheese sandwich. That's pretty basic. Yeah. It's good, though. Aaron, what'd you get at Bucky's? <laughs> he didn't go to Bucky's. He didn't go to Bucky's. <laughs> Oh, make sure I keep track of this. Blake needs 114 yards to hit 2,000 for his career. So I need to make sure to track that tonight and possibly next week. Hopefully just tonight.
Back with you here at Adair County High School. If you listen to that interview with Coach Cheney, what we meant to say at the end of it was that kickoff is on the way in about 12 and a half minutes. We usually put that segment at the end of our pregame show, but the national anthem a bit earlier than we're used to, so we moved that up. And now we're going to dive into this Adair County team as in that conversation, Coach Cheney talked a lot about that Allen County Scottsville game, and we alluded a bit to the keys with this Adair County squad, which Tyler Erdeburn, we knew coming in regardless of who was going to be at quarterback, whether it was the star Easton Jesse or now we suspect Lane Grant, if he's at quarterback, running back, wherever they put him, we know this offense is always going to run through Lane Grant. Yeah, Lane Grant is a solid player. He's six foot, 190 pounds. He's played quarterback pretty much the whole year as a junior. He's, he had about 1,500 rushing yards and 1,500 passing yards. Uh, he's had in, in three games, and only one game has been a full game, and then that was, a, uh, you know, that was a slugfest. But he, in three, you know, partial games, he's had 318 total yards. He had 47 yards against Russell County. In a game that got shut down in the third quarter, he had 139 yards against Gaverna and 132 yards in just a half because they only played a half against LaRue County. Last year against Franklin Simpson, he had 88 tough yards. He worked hard for everyone. He is a hard-nosed runner, always looking for a fight to get more yards and running over, and he can run around players. He's got that unique ability to do that, uses speed and to use his power. He shows that he's a versatile athlete. He's a basketball player as well, was able to play and had a big three in the state tournament against Marshall County. He doesn't have intimidating size, but he's fast and hard-nosed. He mainly will be a runner, but he may have an opportunity or two to throw this evening or more probably. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, he's not very accurate. He, he, he works better as a uh, running back. Uh, but he will play quarterback for most of this game, we believe. Um, he also plays a little defense, showing his versatility. He has three tackles on the season as well. We saw number eight Braxton McKinney, freshman, warming up at least a little bit at quarterback for Adair County. Obviously, when you're out there in your pregame reps, you'll see multiple guys oftentimes get some run, but considering that Grant, it's a very similar case actually to, to Brady Delk. If you go back to last year, now the quarterback for Franklin Simpson, he was the Wildcats leading receiver last year up to this point in the season. Obviously just a, a three game sample size and really for Adair County, like you said, two games cut short. Really only a two game sample size that we've got for them up to this point though, their leading receiver on the season is Lane Grant. But what we got to see firsthand last year was more of Grant the passer against Franklin Simpson. As I talked about with Coach Cheney, Franklin Simpson did a, a better job against Grant than almost anybody did last season. Held him to 88 yards on 24 attempts. That's less than four yards a carry when for carry and 141 yards per game. But what he was able to do was throw the ball. And they even threw in a trick play with somebody else throwing it in that game last year while Grant was playing quarterback. And almost all of what they were able to produce through the air went to Solomon Stonebreaker, son of the second year head coach Steve Stonebreaker, who has done a fantastic job with Adair County. They go 7-4 and four last year. He's now 10-4 and four overall for a team that hasn't won a playoff game since back in 2016. In that game last year against Franklin Simpson, eight catches, 140 yards, two touchdowns for Stonebreaker, and a 27-20 Franklin Simpson win. A as we know, Tyler, as you referenced, it's going to be run first for Lane, but especially if this weather holds Jade Tree at Franklin Simpson High School. It was a battle all the way through, decided in the final moments on a 54-yard run from Colin Anderson. May have been the play of the year for Franklin Simpson after the injury to Lane Alford silenced everything. Colin broke loose, sealed the game, and the Cats win 27-20 to at that point keep their undefeated season alive. Now we're here at Adair County, and the Indians come in once again undefeated. The Wildcats off a stinging loss to Allen County, Scottsville. You never want to lose any game, but if you're Franklin Simpson, that's one in particular you don't like to lose. 36-22, the Patriots come out after a lightning delay and go on an 18-0 run that the Cats only salvaged with a late touchdown and two-point conversion. Tonight, a chance to turn it all around and start district play on the right foot. 
I'm Tyler Eaton, joined by Tyler Artiburn. And, Tyler, I think it's very important considering how that game against Allen County Scottsville went for Franklin Simpson to come out and start this game strong. Absolutely. At least Allen County Scottsville wasn't a district game this year. So you are able to learn some things. You are able to get focused. This is what matters. District play, that's what matters for seeding. That's what matters for, you know, it, you know, RPI matters for other games as well. But district games, you want that one seed. This game is the, the start of the road to getting that. Hart County, according to the media rankings, is not just the darling of this district. The second-ranked team right now in 3A lost a lot from last year, but they've handled their business so far this year, and it's one of those cases of regardless of who they've got, I don't think that opinion is going to change until somebody proves otherwise, but tonight's game is going to go a lot towards that cause as Adair County will start off with the football Red tops for the jerseys, blue pants, white stripes on both Franklin Simpson and the white tops, blue numbers and stripes at the shoulders, blue pants and white helmets. Brody McAllister, who has done such a fantastic job filling in here as a first-year sophomore kicker for the Wildcats. He's yet to miss a PAT on the season, 13 for 13, made his only field goal try. And I feel like, Tyler, from game to game, his kickoffs have been getting a little added length with, with each new game. Absolutely. I mean, he's been working hard. A very dedicated kid, just a solid kid in the classroom, on the football field, on the soccer field, and you know he's going to figure it out and work hard. Brody steps to his left, walks up, puts foot to ball, and we're underway. This one, a squib down the middle of the field, similar to what we saw ACS do every time. It's recovered around the 30, up to the 35. Now, just short of the 40, Adair County will start near their own 37 or 38-yard line. Some you got to see, some you got to watch in this game, and I'm already seeing some of it. Uh, do the players play after the whistle? Mm. Uh, we felt like they did a lot of times. Uh, Derrick County did last year in the game. Seeing them on film, I would make an argument that they play after the whistle. They do some things that are kind of questionable. You don't want to use the word dirty, but questionable is the word I'll use. So that's something to watch in this game. And can Franklin Simpson keep their head? Adair County comes out. Without Grant at quarterback, but instead senior running back Aiden Smith is under center. Grant has been the running back, was the quarterback last year, but without Easton Jesse, we figured he would be the quarterback. But before the first snap, whistles blow, and we have a delay of game against Adair. Well, and that's interesting because we were talking about it before the game, before we were on a broadcast. We saw some film. Well, they have 40-second clocks yes. in, in each of the end zones. I guess the <laughs> officials aren't using those this evening. Uh, or was he looking at that? Did it start? I guess he was using it. I thought he was taking the clock on the field. Smith, we had seen a little bit of film indicating they might try him at quarterback. On the first play, finally hands it off to Grant, running right across the 35, back up near the original line of scrimmage at the 38. So they get the five back that they lost, but it'll be second and 10 there. We expected, and Coach Chaney expected to see Grant at quarterback. You thought we might see Smith in there as well. And it seems for now that's what they're going to go with or maybe alternate the two of them as yeah. Smith heads back under center. Stonebreaker, the star senior receiver, out left, another receiver on the right. 11-23 left, first quarter. This time Smith is going to look to throw it. He wants Stonebreaker for side. He's beat everybody. It's a perfect throw and a sliding catch down the sideline near the Franklin Simpson 30-yard line. And, what, and none of the coaches on Franklin Simpson were even talking about number one Smith being the quarterback. I saw he had one series in the last week game after Easton Jesse was hurt. They had an under center wishbone offense, and I just kind of wondered, are they going to be able to train Smith enough this week to get him ready for a game? They mainly played Lane Grant last week after Jesse was hurt, but Smith did have one series. Now Adair County looks like they're comfortable with him. They've had a lot of coaching with him. And he's coming out here at quarterback and had a dime on that at throw. At the 27-yard line of Franklin Simpson goes for 35. Here a counter. Left side, Grant trips through the hole, trudges up across the 25, tried to dive forward, might have gotten to the 23. Good gain of a few. And as you talked about earlier, he very rarely is going to go down on the first contact. Yeah, he, he, he looks to, to run over people, run around people, and he's good at doing both. And uh, what this was that he's able to do just playing running back. He's able to focus just on running. He's able to get some breaks if you're going to throw the ball a little bit. Uh, yeah, Lane Grant can do what he has been doing all season and run the ball hard, and he did it last year as well. Just a, a great player, able to be in his element this evening. 
Ace formation again under center is Smith. They go with the same play counter left side to Grant. Gets up near the first down marker. Looks like they've got him just short. Now they signal for the chains to move. Uh, well, one member of the chain gang seems to think they're moving. Nope, they're going to keep it third and short here. So it will be third and one gain of six for Grant. And from what we've seen, you can assume that they're going to feed him the rock again here at the 18-yard line of Franklin Simpson. Into the red zone early on after the 35-yard completion to Stonebreaker. The breaking news here, Aiden Smith, the senior running back, starting at quarterback for the Indians. Sends Stonebreaker into motion left to right. They send the other way. The star, Grant, breaks loose. He's got a hole, and he is gone. Touchdown, Adair County from 18 yards out. Yeah, not what you want on the first drive, and he kind of, Franklin Simpson, you're kind of putting a scramble because you got to change your defense up. Uh, totally shell-shocked right now. The yeah. entire game plan, and uh, Coach had told me the original thought was to plan around Jesse and Grant because you figure you see both of them in at times at quarterback. Completely changes now when yeah. Aiden Smith is that new quarterback. And boy, oh boy, they march right down the field even after the starting delay of game with the extra point up and through it is seven to nothing adair county 950 left first quarter you're listening to franklin simpson football on 92.3 wfkf uh, let's do 30s for all the game breaks Back here at Adair County High School where the Indians strike first and it takes just over two minutes to march right down the field and cap it off with an 18-yard run from Lane Grant. The big play, a 35-yard connection from Aiden Smith getting the start at quarterback to Solomon Stonebreaker. The Indians lead it early, but can Franklin Simpson respond? The kickoff fielded inside the 20. Coming up the near side is McPherson. Gets across the 35. Wrapped up as he falls over three or four defenders. Like you said, Tyler Artiburn, more come in after the whistle, but still up near the 40-yard line. And this is what we heard time after time in the Allen County Scottsville game last week. Good starting field position for Franklin Simpson. Yeah, and you got to capitalize. No turnovers, ground and pound this football, and make sure you get in the end zone. If it's going to be a high score and a fair, you want to make sure you score every time. Uh, Dare County has some great defensive players. You got to make sure you get a hat on them and get them blocked. Delk under center, the junior quarterback for Franklin Simpson hands it off to Alford on the first play. The star from that ACS game burst through for a gain of seven. Up the left seam. That's we'll set up a, a short second down here for Franklin Simpson. That's what you have to do to be successful. A healthy amount of Lane Alford this evening. Just getting everybody squeezed in there and making your linebackers get worn out on the defense and just, just continue pounding that rock. Lane had a fantastic game, over 100 yards and had over 100 in just the first half. Only three carries, though, for four yards in the second half as the Cats jump. They're going to get Killen Thompson on the left side for a false start. Actually, it might have been a couple of Cats, Thompson and Bennett. Both of them kind of jumped one after the other, but that's going to walk Franklin Simpson back five yards. It looked like, uh, I don't know, were they in an unbalanced look? Mate, I think. Franklin Simpson may have tried to be in an unbalanced look with a, uh, yeah, they got the two tackles on the right side, I believe. And Delks in the gun might roll out to that right side. No, he's going to hand it off to McPherson going that way behind his extra blockers. He's stacked up near the 45-yard line, dropped just short of it. Might have gotten a yard, but after you have second and short, you get the penalty short gain. Yeah. It's a third and long. And what Franklin Simpson's doing, it's an old-school look. I've not seen it in several years. Not a lot of teams do it where you have an unbalanced look. So 
to the right to the left of the center is just the guard and a tight end who's the eligible player. So on the right side, you have more blockers, so usually you're going to run to the right side. A lot of times defense key over there, but you always have a play to go to the other side. Third and five, they give a friendly spot to the 45 of Franklin Simpson. Shotgun formation, one wide receiver each way. Delk takes the snap, looking to his left, rolling out, pressured, flips it across his body to Groves. Did he hold on through the contact? He did. A physical catch coming back to help his quarterback. Needed five, and where they've got it, he got eight. And we saw early on in the season, Kaysen had some drop problems. That time, a great physical catch walling off the defender to hold on and move the chains. Yeah, he, that was an, uh, just an inspired catch that he had right there. Just able to hold on to that football wasn't easy, but he was able to do it to reel that thing in and be successful. Now into Adair County territory at their 47-yard line. 8-10 left opening quarter. Franklin Simpson trailing 7-0. Delk back under center. Gives it to Alford up the middle. He's across the 45, barreling down past the 40. Trips forward for a couple more. And he is looking exactly like he did at the start of that ACS game. Yeah, pretty much all of the games that Adair County has played to this point has been in the shotgun. And uh, except there were a couple of times where LaRue County lined up in a wishbone, but no quick handoffs like that. So Adair County's not used to a fullback getting that football that quick and barreling through there. And Lane Alford was able to get yards before Adair County even knew what was going on. Got exactly to the line again at the 37. Here comes Anderson outside. Nice juke to try to get around Grant, but has some help. Now he's surrounded by defenders, and that's going to be a big loss. Bound near the 41-yard line. Something I saw about uh, Adair County is they play really good team football. I have that in my notes. I mean, they have guys that are fast, guys that are strong, guys that do everything, but they all work really well together. You saw it on that play, and there was about eight hats at the football ready to make a tackle. Second and 14, right hash ball at the Adair County 41-yard line for Franklin Simpson. Delk sends Anderson into motion right to left. They fake the pitch to him, come back the other way with McPherson, and that's blown up at the line of scrimmage. It's a good tackle by Adair County, able to read that football, able to read where it's going and make the tackle. They'll mark it as a yard loss, so now it's back to the 42-yard line. Five yards lost on the last two plays, third and 15 for Franklin Simpson, kind of in no man's land at the Adair County 42-yard line. And this is also a play, though, if you get six or seven yards, you can think about going for it on fourth down, so that's something to think about as well. You don't have to get the home run play right here, but you got to get something. Seven for 15 through the air for 134 yards, but those three interceptions against Allen County Scottsville. They'll run it here with Anderson on a pitch to the left side, pushes the blocker forward, but he's chopped down a great diving play by Aiden Smith just to lay out and trip Colin up. It would have been a huge gain, but instead he only gets three to the 39-yard line. And, and, and Dare County, I mean, they are running to the football. All their players, we talked about Smith playing quarterback. He's a really good defensive player as well. Runs the football quickly, uh, and it looks like Franklin Simpson is going to have to punt. On fourth and 12 at the 39 of Adair, this is what Franklin did against Allen County Scottsville in these situations. The punt is going to take a bounce, and no one from Franklin Simpson feels it had a chance. That ball landed near the 10, bounced towards the end zone. End zone. I think the Cats thought for a moment that Smith was going to return it, but that's just a senior play there from Aiden Smith to make Franklin Simpson think he was going to pick it up, and instead it bounces into the end zone. was a really good punt there from Brody. Yeah, it was, and that's one where you wanted to go out of bounds, and, you know, you had guys that were able to be there and maybe able to, pin it down deep, but nonetheless, you get an answer no matter what the situation is right here. Defense has come out and played better, and looks like they're trying to, with, with Adair County going under center, Franklin Simpson's already looking like they're changing their defense. They were looking like they were going to try to get speed on the defensive line. It's harder to do that when the quarterback's under center, so they're putting Ezekiel Everhart out there on, at defensive tackle. And what does Adair County do? They come out with Lane Granite, quarterback, in the shotgun. He sends a man into motion going right to left. He's going to keep it himself, running left side, and he's tripped up in the backfield, is able to get up near the line of scrimmage. Might have got a yard or two, but Franklin Simpson ready for that play, which is likely because that's what the Wildcats were practicing for coming into this one. Yeah, and then some extracurriculars already, and they just uh, – 
official just blows the whistle and gets it to stop and talks to the players and say, hey, cool it. Let's not get anything. Good job on the officials to, you know, not overreact and just kind of talk to the players. They say Grant was down at the line of scrimmage, so it goes for no gain. Second and 10 of the Adair County 20-yard line. Grant is going to stay in the shotgun. We'll see how much they rotate Grant and Smith at quarterback. Has a running back to his left, two wide receivers right, one left. Snap is high, but he controls it, fakes a pass to the right side, spins away from the defenders, but he's wrapped up and dropped in the backfield for a four-yard loss. It looked like there to make the play was Caden Bennett, and now some physicality on the near side between Stonebreaker and Colin Anderson, and unsurprisingly, Coach Stonebreaker going crazy at the officials about it, and they're going to chat with Colin real quick. There's no flag as the Adair County fans yelling at the officials to look over in this direction. Stonebreaker, the coach, still going crazy about the physicality down the field between Solomon Stonebreaker at the big catch earlier and Colin Anderson for Franklin Simpson. All of that, Tyler Artiburn, after what was actually a great play for Franklin Simpson defensively, they only mark it as a two-yard loss for Adair, but it sets up a third and 12 at their own 18. And I mean, is, I mean, is Stonebreaker, I mean, Looked like he was throwing a, a temper tantrum down. I don't know what he's doing. He had his headset off his head, he, ready to he, sling it. I thought he did throw it, but <laughs> he gets. I didn't know he was going to be able to get the play in on time, but he does. Third and 12. They go to the gun with Grant. Looks to his right. Now running that way, flushed out, tucks it, and looked like he was just going to make a business decision and finally does down the si sideline, short of the 25-yard line. Needed to get all the way up to the 30. We'll see how early they mark him out, but regardless, after all of that, and a lot of chippiness, which we said that Franklin Simpson wants to avoid in this game. The Wildcat defense makes a stand, and they'll force a punt here after the four-yard run from Grant. Yeah, and I mean, that was tough. I mean, I don't know what Adair County was trying to do on that drive. They looked so good under center with Smith in there at quarterback, and they come out and shotgun. I'd say they'll go back under center if they want to be successful this game. But Franklin Simpson catches a break. Now they're in business, able to – uh, catch this punt and score. It's a low driving punt down the right side that I believe bounced right on the sideline. Official coming down to mark where it was officially out at. Regardless, should be good field position for Franklin Simpson, and they mark it at the FS 44. Yeah, so Franklin Simpson started their first drive uh, with 59 yards to go. This is 56 yards. If you're going to be in business in this game, you got to get this football. You got to drive it down the field. This is very important to score. You can't just have empty possessions, missed possessions. Uh, looks like some more conversations with the official and Coach Stonebreaker, which is going to slow down Franklin Simpson's offense and get them started. They're walking up to the line of scrimmage, and you're able to, defense is able to adjust. But nonetheless, here we go, and we're playing. Delk under center offered behind him. Hands it to him going right. Gets across the 45, driving up to the 46 for a gain of a couple on first down. I think for Franklin Simpson here, really just want to settle in and, and sustain, obviously want to score, but settle in, sustain something, and avoid what you've been talking about, the post-play chippiness. D at the very least, in a foreign environment, yes. with what you've talked about outside of our normal officials, you can't be the ones to start it. Yes. Second and seven. Delk fakes it to the first man, trying to go outside, and that goes absolutely nowhere as McPherson is blown up in the backfield for a massive loss back near the 40-yard line. We'll see if they give any forward progress. They don't. And it's back to the 40, a seven-yard loss. And that was the other middle linebacker, Tristan Mullins, who's a solid player as well. Uh, he, you know, he on a blitz there. He's just, again, just a sophomore, but able to get in the backfield. He's a solid player. Dare County has really, really good linebackers between Mullins and Rogers. 3-10 left first quarter. Franklin trailing at 7 to nothing with a third and 14 at their own 40. Groves out wide on the left side. Delk in the gun. Sends Anderson into motion left to right. But before the play, a flag comes in. And we get a false start against Franklin Simpson. March it back five more yards to the 35 as the Adair County defense pumping up their crowd. 
Yeah. This is a fan base that is supercharged for this team and this game. And this this is a hostile environment. Anytime, yes. I, I'll be honest, just you can tell how hostile of an environment is by the amount of lawn chairs that you see in the field. Because <laughs> you can't just escape these fans when you go to your sideline. They are all around the field. Third and 19. Delk in the gun. Same play. They put Anderson into motion, looking downfield for Groves. He's the only man downfield. Turns. It's underthrown, and it's picked off by Smith. 40-45. 50 crosses midfield, has some room, pushed out of bounds in Franklin Simpson territory. Tough to see where exactly he stepped out, but the Indians are going to be set up with great field position, a throw into double coverage. It was Groves against two defenders, and Smith, who had six interceptions last year, gets his second pick of this season, and they're going to mark that he got all the way down to the Franklin Simpson 30. So he's a heck of a defense player. Let's see what Adair County does here. They're in business. Only about 30 yards to go to get in the end zone. Are they going to? Looks like uh, Smith is coming back out at quarterback. You'd almost assume he's back under center. As good as they looked on that first drive, I don't know how you go away from it. Yep, he's able to run. That means Grant's able to run downhill, and he's able to bootleg with his speed and. He can throw the ball, too. Big formation here with three tight ends. Now they move one as the up back in front of Grant. They hand it off to him running left. Cuts inside. Gets around defenders. Moving downfield. He's got a first down inside the 20-yard line. Spins down around the 15. And so Franklin Simpson is, uh, you know, it's just almost like cat and mouse. They don't know who to put out there on defense. They put their speed guys for the shotgun, or they put the power guys for the under center. And, you know, having to mix and match and trying to go uh, toe for toe. And, you know, it's tough to call a defense like that. Ball on the left hash at the 14-yard line of Franklin Simpson. First and 10 there for Adair County, up 7 to nothing, with two minutes left and ticking in this opening quarter. And here they go back to the gun. Or no, they've got, yes, Grant in the shotgun, moved around a little bit before the snap, gets it. He's pushing his own men forward. Juking both ways, just barreling downfield was a bit of a broken play, but still able to get down near inside the 10-yard line. He is just such a player, Tyler Artiburn. Yes. That, sh that had no right to be anything and yet was able to drive forward and turn it into what ended up being a 9-yard game. It looked like a busted play. Adair County is a little confused on offense and uh, looks like the uh, Stonebreakers again. He's taking a timeout just official, to go to the official. Which you can't. You're not supposed to be able to do with KHSAA rules, but here we go. We're in anyway. 122 left in the first quarter. It's going to be a second and one for Adair County. Down at the Franklin Simpson five-yard line. Already leading it seven to nothing. And it has been all Lane Grant on the ground. They've had the one pass completion from Smith to Stonebreaker. But outside of that, every single play has been a grant run. And all but two of them have gone for positive yardage so far. And, and the big thing with that is it's not just that all but two have gone for positive yardage. All but two have gone for at least four yards. So he's picking up good chunks every time he runs the ball. Yeah, he can run it from anywhere. The shotgun, I mean, he busts the play, whatever it is. He's just running at wheel, um, running wherever he wants to. And, uh, yeah, I mean... Franklin Simpson, you got to make a play. Adair County bringing on a player late as Smith will go back under center here. Hands it off to your guy, the big fullback in there, Rogers. The ball came out, but he's ruled down. Thompson was running the other way with it for Franklin Simpson. No, it's got to be Moss the way he's running. <laughs> You're right. That's a six zero, not an eight zero. Yeah. I think uh, Thompson would have had a. He would have had about ten more yards by then. We'll see officially where it's marked. For now, they say it's no gain for Rogers, and it'll be a third and one, down at the five. So now pushing them back to a third down. Franklin Simpson's able to. Hopefully make a play here, make a stand. I formation a with Smith under center. The running back is Grant. They pitch to him running right, trying to get the edge. Cuts back upfield, slips past a tackler, and wiggles his way in for a five-yard score. Grant's just able to take advantage of an opportunity outside, able to 
run through arm tackles and get into the end zone. That was the number one concern that stood out from the scrimmage that we broadcasted was the tackling for FS. And some teams you can get away with arm tackles. Adair County and Lane Grant, not one of them. No, absolutely not. A hard-nosed runner. I mean, just a, you know, quick and you know, powerful. Just a, a really good high school running back. And, boy, he is a completely different animal as a running back because here the PAT might have been tipped, might not have been. It was popped up straight into the air. It'll save Franklin Simpson at least a point, but as it stands, 33 seconds left opening quarter. Still, the catch trail it 13 to nothing. You're listening to Wildcat Football on 92.3 WFKN. All right, we'll do 30. Back here at Adair County High, where the Indians lead at 13 to nothing in the first quarter against Franklin Simpson. 33 ticks left in this opening frame. Cats did get a missed PAT there after the five-yard touchdown run from Lane Grant, his second of the night already. 10 carries for 65 yards in those two scores. Here comes Blake McPherson, gets away from one tackle on the kickoff, and Tyler Arterburn, once again, the Cats are going to start past their own 40. They have done it every drive. Can they move the ball this time? We've had a punt and an interception that practically served as a punt on that last timeout. Yeah, absolutely. You got to, again, you got to get something. And going. it's the 44 just like it was last drive. Yeah. You cannot, we cannot get put in a third and long situation. Year yep. after year, whenever we talk about Franklin Simpson, this offense, we do have plays to be in third and long, but we're not built for third and long. Um, so uh, we got to make sure that we're not in that situation. Delk under center, Alford behind him. Anderson is flanked off left. Delk takes the snap, gives it to Alford, running left, and there are three Indians in the backfield. A couple more pile on after the fact for good measure. Lane still down but gets up late. And that's going to be a loss of one on first down. Another back in there for Franklin Simpson. Looks like he's... Make it the football, but uh, serving as a, a blocker on that play is Keegan Hazel. We'll see if the Wildcats are going to try to get him involved. And that'll bring the first quarter to a close. We'll keep it here as we just took a break. Feel like we need to digest this one a little bit. 13 to nothing. Franklin Simpson trailing Adair County. It's been all about the ground game on both sides of the ball, really, for the, the Indians. Obviously, we just talked about everything that Grant has done. But if you look at Franklin Simpson offensively, they've run it nine times. Four of them have gone for negative yardage. Had that 10-yard run from Lane early on. It really came out Lane, seven-yard run, 10-yard run. And it looked like it was going to be another one of those nights. But Adair has shut everything down for the Cats. And maybe most shockingly, shockingly to Franklin Simpson, it's been that outside run that they've shut down after Collin was able to get loose and have so many yards against them last year. Yeah, anything, it seems like anything that uh, Franklin Simpson takes, that's gonna, that any play that they call that takes a little while to develop, Adair County is right there. They are fast and they are disciplined on defense. So uh, look to see if the Wildcats have some more plays that are quick hitters right up the middle. And then you can get into those plays where you're, you're faking to the lane and then handing it to the other back. But you got to establish those quick hitter plays that are going to get the defense swelled in and, and a little bit nervous. As we get the second quarter underway, Franklin Simpson at their own 43-yard line, second and 11, trailing it 13 to nothing. Delk hands it off to Alford up the middle, and it goes for nothing. Ball might have popped out as well. Adair County thinks they have it. Wildcats motioning for the same thing. Official comes in to clear up the pile. Waiting still for an official ruling. Usually if it, 
I'd say it's staying Franklin Simpson. If they ain't making a determination by now, I mean, uh, what's there to talk about? Who has the football? And they say it's a Dare County ball. All that discussion, and Coach Chaney is going to come out how do you, and how, inquire, it looks like. How do you discuss a fumble? Like, who has the football? What, what was there to discuss? Uh, you know, it's. It was a run just back to the line of scrimmage for Lane. They rule a fumble recovered by Adair County. And the Indians take over at the Franklin Simpson 43-yard line, leading it 13 to nothing after the long discussion from the officials. Cats thought they had it the entire time. Adair County thought they had it. it the pile was cleared, and like you said, initially there was no ruling. And then we finally get it all settled, and Adair County takes over again in prime position. They put Smith back under center, eye formation. With Grant as the halfback, they pitch it out to him on the right. He's going to look to throw it. Downfield, there's triple coverage, and it's overthrown and incomplete. The Wildcats, to their credit, were all over that one. Yeah, very disciplined football on that double pass or you, uh, whatever you want to call it, halfback pass. We haven't seen one of those it's, in a while. Can so we I call it a halfback pass if it's Grant that's throwing it? Yeah, I guess the Wildcat <laughs> quarterback pass, I don't know. A Wildcat quarterback pass out of under center. Whatever you want to call it, but nonetheless, good discipline by the defensive backs of Franklin Simpson. You had a veteran Blake McPherson over there in coverage, and so we get an ineligible receiver downfield as well. That's called. So officially, we wipe the incompletion off, and now it'll be first and fifteen. Adair County walks back to the Franklin Simpson forty-eight yard line. Big thing, though, that is not a loss of down, so it would have been second and 10 or first and 15. Coach Chaney chose yards instead of downs. So. Ace formation, Smith under center, just the running back lane behind him. Takes the snap, hands it off to Lane Grant running right. Slips past the first tacklers. He's past the 40, 30, running down the sideline. He's got one man to beat. He does. And while he can't complete the pass deep, Lane Grant instead runs in for a 48-yard touchdown for his third score of the night. That, that's what I was talking about, man. He's got some speed. Not only does he has, have power and able to break tackles, he has incredible speed, and he's able to show it there. Adair County coming in at 3-0 on the season, showing everyone so far just why they've been so dangerous and the story tonight has been the same as what we talked about, Tyler. They have gotten it done on both sides of the ball. And as the PAT awaits, the officials had turned to motion to the Adair County sideline. Now they'll get set. We'll see if they can knock this one through after missing the last one. It was popped right up into the air by Bart. And this one up and good. 10.59 left in the first half. It's all Adair County. The Indians lead at 20 to nothing on their home field. You're listening to Franklin Simpson Football on 92.3 WFKN. before the Cats rally and win 27 to 20. It's going to take something similar from Franklin Simpson to pull one off here tonight, trailing it 20 to nothing, just over a minute in to the second quarter. Cats have started past their own 40 on every drive. They've had a punt, an interception, and a fumble so far. Franklin Simpson's had their back against the wall before this season and years past. We'll see what answer they're able to give. We said coming in, it's about how you respond to adversity in terms of bouncing back from a setback. 
How do you do that in a one-game situation here? Lane Alford fields a short kickoff. He trucks a man, gets past midfield up to the 45, and if anybody's going to kickstart this team, it's Lane Alford up near the Adair County 40. My goodness, what a run. He's a senior. He wants to play football. Oh, my goodness, he wants to win. I, I've not seen too many players that will put a whole team on their back like I see Lane Alford. We saw him do that against Allen County, Scottsville. Late came in and blitzed through and blocked a PAT just to try to keep this team on life support. Of all the good field position, here's the best that the Cats have had at the Adair County 42-yard line. Ball at the left hash. And Delk operating out of the gun here. He's got a receiver to his left side. They load it with backs on the right. Anderson running left. Gets past the 40, runs into two defenders around the 37-yard line, but that's a positive gain on first down. And you got some guy, Franklin Simpson, has a player limping off, casing him shoot. I uh, hope he's going to be able to come back. Looks like a, a leg injury will monitor that. But, yeah, positive yards, that's what you got to have. Positive yards. The third and longs, uh, they're not going to work. Uh, they're not going to put us in a situation. Hold on to that football. No turnovers. And, uh, you know, Franklin Simpson can get back in business on this drive. Picks up four to the 38-yard line as Delk is back under center. He's got Aiden Jones behind him this time. Hands it off to him. Running right. Crashes into the 35-yard line. Then lowers the head to get up to the 34. And if you want a player that can... Get you positive yards on every play. That's Aiden Jones. Oh, my goodness. He runs hard. Bulldozer type running They back. actually give him the 33. Did a good job of just keeping the legs churning there. So it'll be third and one. Huge play for Franklin Simpson. Definitely in four down territory. Trailing at 20 to nothing. Third and one down at the 33 of Adair County. Delk under center. Takes the snap, and I think we're going to get a false start there on the quarterback as Delk started to move early trying for a quarterback sneak. Yeah, and he just – He oh, picked up the yardage, but he started to move before he got the snap. Trying to do it on a silent count, and the the, court, the center wasn't on the same page, and yeah. it's going to be a false start, which is very unfortunate because I believe he would have picked it up. He did. He had it with ease. So my, I guess it might have helped that he had a running start. And now it's a third and six for Franklin Simpson. We've seen it a couple of times in this game so far. Penalties getting getting in the way of the Cats. But now a huge play, third and six at the Adair County 38-yard line with 9.30 and ticking left in the first half, down 20 to nothing. Cats do get the ball to start the second half. So if you can string some stuff together here, you got a chance, but it starts potentially with this play. Delk in the gun. Snap is behind him. Goes back to midfield, and Adair County recovers it. There were two Wildcats in the area, but Adair County jumps on it. There to recover is Tristan Mullins, the sophomore linebacker. And it has just been disaster after disaster for Franklin Simpson. As Adair County will take over again in Wildcat territory, at the 27-yard line, a high snap. Delk couldn't corral it. He and Anderson went after it, but Adair County screamed in, got a body on it, and they take over after another Franklin Simpson turnover, the third of the night. Now, if your back wasn't against the wall already, it is right now. Franklin Simpson, if it's defense, if they want any hope going in, they don't want Adair County to completely take over to this game. They got to make a stand. They're going to go back to Smith, under center at quarterback. I formation with the fullback, Rogers, and behind him, the star with already three touchdowns, Lane Grant. It's a miscommunication, but now it goes to Stonebreaker on an end around. Misses the first tackler inside the 40, cuts at the 35, and dragged down near the 33-yard line. Gets up and signals for the first down. I don't know if that was designed to look like a broken play, Tyler Artaburn is the quarterback, Smith, went back, collided with both Grant and Rogers, the running backs behind him, but then handed it off to Stonebreaker, who picks up 15 to open the drive. And I was wondering, how are they going to get, you know, with Stonebreaker and the talent he has as a wide receiver, and you got Lane Grant in there as, as a quarterback, how are you going to get him the football? Well, that's one way, fake it to Grant and then uh, let Stonebreaker come on the reverse. 
First and 10 at the 32 of Franklin Simpson. Eight and a half minutes left, first half. They go up the middle to that powerful fullback driving forward as Rodgers inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. As you mentioned, he just barrels through there. Yeah, he's not going to – I mean, he's, he's got quickness. I don't know if he's got just uh, just straight out speed, but he's got some quickness, but he definitely has power. He's a you know, old-school player, one of those old-school – linebackers that can uh, cover the pass and come up and stop the run, love stopping the run, and, you know, that linebacker-fullback combo. You don't see that as often anymore, but uh, he's just uh, – he, he's a really good player for Adair County. They've got him in there at fullback again. I formation, one wide receiver each way, stonebreaker out right, Jada Miller on the left, second and six. Smith fakes the handoff to the fullback this time, keeps it himself running left. He's tripped up. And – Grant gets a short gain that time as I believe it was Blake coming out of the defensive backfield to dive in, chop him down, and make it just a gain of one on the ground for Smith. And we got a third and five coming up at Dare County at the 27 of Franklin Simpson. They have not attempted a field goal this year, and based on the extra points, I would assume this might be four down territory for a Dare. But you can't think about that if you're Franklin Simpson. This team is so dangerous. Five yards is nothing for this offense. Absolutely. you got to make a stop on both plays. Smith under center, and did Adair jump, or did the Cats go off sides? Adair County thinks it's on Franklin Simpson. Of course, Franklin thinks it's on Adair. The officials will discuss. As the call comes in, it's off sides on Franklin Simpson, and that gives Adair County a free first down. And, uh, yeah, I was just looking. Uh, Smith looked like he was gassing that play. His pat in his chest looked like he was going to need to come out. But, able to, you know, that's something that you can do with a snap count, try to get them to jump off sides. And several Franklin Simpson defenders did. Now the chains move. They didn't for a moment. 22-yard line for Adair County of Franklin Simpson. As Grant comes up and talks to the quarterback, Smith, who was under center, might have seen something there that he wants. We'll see if they go to Grant here. Already with three touchdowns in the game. Smith hands it off to Grant. Up the middle, huge hole, splits the C and trots in for his fourth touchdown of the first half. 22-yard run for Lane Grant as advertised. Yeah, he's, he's a really good player, and he's showing it. I mean, he at running back, compared to what he was at quarterback, is yes. a completely different animal. Yeah, I was saying this offense is night and day compared to who's quarterback. And uh, if, if Grant's able to play running back or play quarterback and playing running back, you know, he is a solid player. They're going to keep the offense out on the field here to try to make it a 28 to nothing ball game. And who would have thought we'd be in a position when Adair County is strategically pushing for a running clock? Mm. With 6.21 left in the first half, I formation. Catch jumped. Uh, I think Adair Or is that one going to be on Adair? This time it is caused by Adair. Thank you. And if, now they're going to opt to kick it. If both players jump, offense and mm. defense, then it's uh, usually always – I've never seen a situation where it doesn't go against the offense. So I think both players jumped, but uh, Franklin Simpson is, takes the benefit of that one. And it walks it back. I think the Cats are going to bring everybody to try and block this. That walk, walks it back five yards for a kicker in Barden who missed a PAT earlier. And now Adair County is going to take a timeout. I wonder if they're not still thinking. Well, it doesn't. I don't know. I wonder if they're still thinking of – Potentially going for this doesn't seem to be the case unless Coach Stonebreaker Stonebreaker's got a fake up his sleeve. Uh, yeah, fake field goal is not something you usually. With this offense, you think football. you would just go for it with the yeah. way that they've been operating. Yeah, I mean that fake field goals. I've never. But seen to it be fair, Coach Stonebreaker does not operate like most high schools. No, he doesn't. Uh, well, this way you can tell he, he he coaches his players and coaches them well and. They're well-disciplined, so they may have a fake field goal in there. I, I just, you know, <laughs> most of the time, you just rather run your offense. But it looks like he's 
Coach Stonebreaker's walking away from the uh, – from uh, he's coming and close they, to the And what he did so. was brought in a different kicker in Matthew Majan, who has not kicked this season. The sophomore listed as a wide receiver. Cats try to block it. They don't. And the long extra point is good. And I'll, I'll fix it for him. The PA announcer said it. It's pronounced Magine. His first kick of the year. Steps in. They push him back five yards. He doesn't care. 27 to nothing at Dare County. We'll stay here with 621 left in this second quarter. Franklin Simpson handed fantastic field position on every single drive. If you go back to that last one, even started in a Dare territory but turn it over on the snap over the quarterback's head, which came after a procedural penalty, had a third and one, but moved early on a quarterback sneak that would have easily converted it. And Franklin Simpson offensively has yet to be, be able to generate anything in this ball game. Yeah, no, just had one drive where you – had any type of movement. I mean, Only one drive with a first down. Yep, you had that first drive of the game. There were seven plays, and since then, second drive was two plays, and then one play, and then two plays again. Um, so, yeah, not a um, not you know a good performance so far. With 6:21 left before halftime, the Wildcats have under 30 yards of offense. As McPherson fields the kickoff in a world of trouble this time, and he's dropped back inside his own 25-yard line. Maybe this is what Franklin Simpson needs. Maybe they need to start pushed back a bit more. I don't know. I mean, he got a long way to go. You got to try something different. Maybe this is it. Let's see how the Cats choose to operate. 6-16 left before halftime, trailing 27 to nothing. Three turnovers, an interception, and two fumbles. They come out in the gun, two wide receivers on the right side. Delk takes the snap, rolling to his right, looking downfield. He's going to tuck it and run. Gets away from two defenders across the 30, 35, down the sideline near the 40-yard line. They mark him out back at the 38, but regardless, again, a 13. Uh, good play there. Uh, you know, it looked like the, the defensive player wasn't sure on whether to make a tackle and and Brady's able to make a move on him. And, and it was actually Lane Grant time. who was yeah. there to make the play. But Brady, we've talked about this, the athleticism that he brings to that quarterback spot, just able to get away and generate the biggest offensive play of the game for Franklin Simpson so far with a 13-yard gain. They put Delk back under center on this play. Lane Alford as his fullback. Pitches it outside. McPherson has some blockers. Gets across the 40. Chopped down at the 42-yard line. And Blake's still down. He crawls off the field of the sideline, rolling over, holding that knee, which is right where he was hit. Could have just been as a result of the helmet hitting there. Oh. It was a gain of four to the 42, and now the officials will take a timeout on their accord. Yeah, he, he's off the field, but he's still in what you consider the the field of play. The field of play, you know, about you got about two, three yards out of bounds, and if a player's there and you're running over there, you don't want a player to get stepped on. Or they help him to his feet, was down for a bit. Couldn't tell. It really just seemed like, at least initially, that that was just where the hit was down around the knee. And regardless of those knee pads you wear, it's not going to do much when the helmet makes contact, especially yeah. coming in from the side. Yeah, but Franklin Simpson, nonetheless, has had some you know, positive plays this, this drive. So let's see if they can keep it up. Second and six up at the 42-yard line. Delk under center again. Gives it up the middle to the 45-46 yard line. Another gain of four will make it third and short. And again, that uh, lane offered. He's not one that's going to back down. And no matter what this game looks like, it looks like Adair County sending in a little bit more uh, size on that defensive line. But... 
Lane, all, no matter what this game you know boils down to, Lane's not going to want to come out uh, at all. He's going to want to keep playing and keep battling. He's just a warrior out there. Uh, you, you see it on that play. Third and two. Up at the 46-yard line, really between the 46 and the 47 of Franklin Simpson. Alford's the fullback. Delt takes it this time. They run that quarterback keeper, and he gets up near midfield for the first down. That time executed really just as it was the last time, but didn't take off early. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to look like, just a methodical drive. You got the quarterback sneak. I hadn't seen that in a couple of years from Franklin Simpson. And not a lot of times where you're in position for it, but uh, it's been such an effective play in years past. I don't know if we've ran it any, uh, you know. Well, what we saw a point. lot last year was Matthias around the edge, and we'd seen that play a yeah. couple times with Brady this season, but not much up the middle. Here, Delk in the gun. Anderson to his right as the halfback. Takes the snap, hands it off to Colin running left. Gets away from the first man, but then he's wrapped up for another big loss in the backfield. The line of scrimmage was the 50 and they've got this marked back at the 44 of FS, a six-yard loss. And Dare County just looks like, for the most part, they're not respecting the run or the pass. No. They're just blitzing on every play. They're looking at the guards and seeing where the guards are and just trying to run through there. They got a, you know, it looks like a good defensive coach, uh, you know, just who's changing things up and getting guys in position to make plays. Delk back in the gun, this time Alford with him in the backfield. Two wide receivers on the right side. Delk rolling that way, looking downfield, throws an out route. It's underthrown and goes off the hands of Grant and fortunately falls incomplete because if it didn't, he had his fifth touchdown of the night. Yeah, there wasn't much over there. Colin Anderson made a really good move downfield and was open, but you know, Brady didn't look like he could get it to him, so... They threw it into coverage. I think pass might have been there, but was just a little bit underthrown on that out route down the field, which is a tough throw to make on the run. As here on third and 16, again, the Cats have shot themselves in the foot, back this thing up. It's another third and long. Delk will be in the gun, Anderson in the backfield. One wide receiver split out to the left side. Anderson goes in motion left to right. Delk looking downfield on a crosser. It's caught. A big hit comes in, but Groves holds on to it up in Adair County territory at the 45-yard line. It's an 11-yard gain. Not enough for the first down, but gives the Cats a chance to go for it on fourth and manageable. They need to get to the 40 balls at the 45, and that is the second great catch by Groves in contact tonight. Yeah, now Franklin Simpson's in a, chan in, in a spot here even – if you go on two, it's a first down. So uh, you'll see what strategy the Wildcats have. Delk still in that shotgun formation. Takes the snap, fakes a handoff, running to his left. It's a design quarterback run, chopped down. It's going to come down to the spot. Tried to push forward to get the ball up to the line of gain. Extended his body up. The officials coming in to discuss it. It all comes down to where they spot this thing. They put oh, it at the man. 40. And Franklin Simpson gets just enough for the first down. What a gutsy play on fourth and five to call a quarterback run around the left side out of the shotgun. And Brady gets just enough. And now the Wildcats are moving on this drive. Ball at the 40 of Adair County on the left hash. Delt goes back under center. 2.42 left in this opening half. No, takes a snap, fakes a handoff, fakes a second to Anderson, looking downfield, floats it up, jump ball incomplete. Groves was in pursuit, but it's knocked down by Caden Watson back there in coverage, the senior DB for Adair. Brady had plenty of time on that play, which meant that the defense was biting on the fake. Good time, good opportunity to take a shot, but uh, just a little bit overthrown. He can sling it. Oh, That's one thing we know. And if you've watched him on the baseball field, throw one in from the outfield, you know the same thing. Yep. He's got that baseball arm, which, you know, <laughs> uh, if somebody comes over and, as a quarterback, you ain't going to teach them that much about how to throw deep. So uh, he's got that naturally. Back under center again this time. It looks like it's Jones that's behind him. They're going to throw it this time as Delk rolls out to the right, keeps it again. 
Gets past the first man who wrapped him up around the feet. Now dives up near the 37. They might give him the 36. Again, just a good job by Brady to keep the play alive. Pick up a few and give the Cats a chance to move this thing up on third down. You, you know, again, it's exactly what we just saw. Two plays to pick up these seven yards as they give him a gain of three. Yeah, so you definitely don't want, you don't like being in third and long. A third and seven, it's it's third and manageable. And even if you just get, you know, four or five on this play, you're still down in four down territory. But the clock is starting to tick against you coming inside two minutes. Still no Blake McPherson. Just saw him limping up and down the sideline. As the Cats are going to have Delk back under center here. And I think Wildcats are going to take a timeout before the play. And they do with 1.39 left before halftime. Trailing at 27 to nothing. At the Adair County, 37. It's a third and seven on what has been by far the most productive drive of the day for Franklin Simpson. And a lot of it has been Brady Delk with his legs, had the big catch by Case and Groves. But that's where you can mess with that game plan like you talked about of keying in on the Franklin Simpson backs. You throw Delk into that fold, and it's a lot harder to pick out who you're blitzing after. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's able to get the ball around the edge and some good run plays. I don't know if all of them are designed runs, but he's able to use his leg to make you know, to make plays. And uh, when that happens, you get yards, and you're not forcing the ball into coverage when you're throwing down deep. So it's a safe play uh, whenever you have that opportunity. Cats walking back onto the field. Alford and Jones in for Franklin Simpson. We saw Lane used in the passing game against Allen yeah. County. Scottsville had a couple of catches. We'll see if they let him loose for a route here. Anderson has been the main target in the passing game for most of the season for Franklin Simpson. Kaysen the main guy outside, but Colin the big play receiver. Had a couple of catches for 45 yards against Allen County. Scottsville wasn't able to do much on the ground in that game, but he's been a weapon out there. As Lane will line up on the far left side, Groves is a wide receiver on the right. They bring Alford into motion left to right. They hand it off to Anderson up the middle, slips through a hole. He needs to get to the 30, does, and the Cats move the chains on third down. Great play call, just right up the middle. And Colin Anderson, and using his senior leadership, able to find a hole uh, to get through to that first down. And that's where Colin, as much as we see him go outside, we haven't as much this year seen that run with him between the tackles because as fast as he is, I know you want to get him outside, but he's so small. He can fit through holes that a lot of other running backs can't, and he's so hard to bring down. Absolutely. I mean, you can't. You almost can't see him, <laughs> um, you know, just to be honest with you. Heavy package to the left side. Delk sends a man into motion. That's all for now. They pitch it out left to Anderson. Stuck in traffic. Tries to get outside, turns it upfield, and – Gets a yard until the ball comes out. Fumble down the sideline. And going? I believe the officials are ruling that it rolled out of bounds. And it will stay with FS. Would have been their fourth turnover, third on a fumble. But fortunately for the Cats, they're going to hold on to the ball and maybe pick up two feet on that play. So the Wildcats are... Still in business. What they did is they used a, uh, I guess you call it a false motion, where you motion a, a running back to the right, but then pitch it out to the left. And what that does is that freezes the linebackers for just a second. But Adair County with just a, a, a yard, or just a yard gain by calling, Adair County wasn't too full. And their defensive backs are aggressive with yeah. coming up to help in the run game. Delk looking to throw here, rolls out to his right. Everybody's covered. Now dumps it off at the last moment. It goes off the hands of Jones and incomplete. Believe Thompson had leaked open downfield, had both hands up around the 10-yard line and what might have been the only hole in the coverage, but that was down the left scene. And at that point, Brady was just focused on trying to get that ball to anybody. It was fantastic coverage by Adair. Yeah, that was a, a, a cover. Sometimes you call it coverage sack. If they would have gotten to him, it would have been there. But... Uh, Brady had all kinds of time to throw that ball, and whenever you're able to roll out successfully and not and get outside, a lot of times that creates time to throw the football, but nobody was open, so it didn't help. Third and nine, 51 seconds left before halftime. They try a handoff. Delt drops it, got it back, lost it again, 
It's recovered, and Adair County is going to take this for a touchdown. And would you believe it, it's Lane Grant. It was fumbled, recovered, and then dropped again. The third fumble turnover of the day for the Cats and the fifth touchdown of the night for Lane Grant. Just as the Wildcats were, looked like they were getting some things going, uh, Lane Grant makes a play on defense. You talk about a do-it-all player. Yep, that's it. <laughs> had played quarterback. He had been their best receiver. Yeah, he's a... Uh, they he's put him in at running back today. He's been spectacular. Had been spectacular in that role all season. We didn't know if we would see him play running back today. He's run for four touchdowns, and he housed the fumble, and they bring him right back out here in the eye formation, going for two with 39 seconds left before the half. And I think there the plan might have just been to see if they could get the Cats to jump off sides with a 33 to nothing lead as Coach Stonebreaker takes a timeout. 39 seconds left before the break. In a game that I, I staked my reputation on Tyler Arterburn. I got to pick games for the Daily News this week. They brought me in as their special guest picker. The special guest for the last three weeks had gone nine and one hmm. each week. I missed the first game last night with Caverna and Edmondson County. Every single one of us took Edmondson County, Caverna won. Every single one of us picked Franklin Simpson tonight. And Adair County leads it 33 to nothing. And, and I would have told you coming in, and I said it on the radio with Will David today, that I, I believe that it was going to be a battle. It was going to be a fight. And it's been a physical game, and the turnovers make it more lopsided. I don't know that anybody, even the Adair County faithful, I don't know if Coach Stonebreaker himself quite expected this. Yeah, they've taken it too, Franklin Simpson. Adair County, you can't say anything else. They have played a really good ball game and just taken it to them. They come out to go for two out of their timeout. They've got Smith in the gun. Grant to his left, takes the snap, looks right under pressure, floats it up, and it's completed to Stonebreaker as the Cats had brought up a defensive back to help after Smith got away from the initial tacklers and just as the DB started to make his break towards the quarterback Smith the pass was thrown to Stonebreaker and it's now 35 to nothing Adair County leads it you're listening to Franklin Simpson football on 92.3 WFKN in the final 39 seconds of this half. We're going to have a running clock for the rest of this game. It's been adjusted from last year and years past. The, the mark was 36. It's at 35. I, and I mentioned the caveat, Tyler, because I do remember the old rule was if you get back under it in the first half, it stops that from being the case. Adair tries an onside kick here. Lane Alford gets it. Aiden Jones comes out, makes a big block, but then Alford pressing forward through defenders, lost the football. Adair County again believes they have it, and Smith comes out of the pile holding the football for Adair. As the officials discuss, they may be trying to figure out whether or not the runner was down. Uh Jackson Gass is up there in the area trying to plead the Franklin Simpson case, yeah. but it's going to be a Dare County football. Another fumble for Franklin Simpson. Yeah, there's no doubt it was going to be a Dare County's football. He wasn't down. He's still up. And 
Yeah, and a fumble, and we'll see what Adair Kenny does. Well, scratch whatever ever I was saying about preventing the running clock. There's just a lot that we just scratch what we say this evening. 35 to nothing as Adair County takes over at the Franklin Simpson 45-yard line after the fumble on the kickoff that Franklin Simpson was getting after a fumble return touchdown for Adair County. Smith under center, pitches it outside to Grant. He's already got five touchdowns, splits through a hole now, wrapped up past the 40, down near the 37-yard line. And some physicality after the whistle from both teams, and especially as this clock ticks, to ticks towards the half, I, th I think that's the last thing that either side wants. Yeah, just get everybody in halftime. And, and Coach Stonebreaker is signaling his guys over. He wants to do exactly that. While his players wanted to stay out in the field, he's waving his guys over. After a seven-yard run from Grant, the Indians will allow the Wildcats to walk mercifully into halftime. 35 to nothing, our score. Lane Grant with all five touchdowns in this game for Adair County. They forced multiple Franklin Simpson turnovers. They returned the fumble for a touchdown. Four fumbles total and an interception for Franklin Simpson in the first half of this ball game. We'll take a break. When we come back, we give you all the numbers from the opening half of football from Adair County. We'll take a look at some scores from around the area and do what we can to get you set for the second half of play here at Adair County High. You're listening to Franklin Simpson Football on 92.3 WFKN.
back here with you at Adair County High School. We're at the break. It is 35-0, Adair County leading it over Franklin Simpson High School. Tyler Eaton joined by Tyler Ardeburn and uh, maybe the most shell-shocked, not maybe, absolutely the most shell-shocked halftime show that we've had to try to piece together, Tyler, as we came in. Uh, knowing for sure that this was a very good Adair County team. Their record on the season would tell you that was the case. It was tough to really know because of who they played up to this point in the season and because Russell County in their opener came out and gave them such a fight. A Russell County team that I don't think anybody is looking at it and saying that that's a team that uh, Adair County should struggle with at all. They come in here without their quarterback. Easton Jesse was out for the rest of the season implementing a new quarterback who, as you mentioned earlier, had about a week to learn this system. And they have looked like world beaters on both sides of the football. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I coming into this game, I thought, okay, Adair County, they, are, they didn't lose a lot last year. It was a tough game. They probably think they should have won down in Franklin. This is going to be a tough game. Maybe, you know, if I had to predict and be honest, maybe, you know, you'd say, okay, Franklin Simpson may, uh, you know, Derek County may squeak out a loss. 35 to nothing at halftime, I didn't think. And I just went, walked down and uh, went to the restroom, and I heard all kinds of Derek County fans as well saying, I wasn't expecting this. Um, I, I don't know anybody in this stadium, in, you know, in, in Franklin listening or anything that thought – Adair County would be up 35 to nothing. And it's been not just because of what Adair County has done, not to take away, obviously, from the performance that they have had, but a lot of it has had to do with the mistakes on the Franklin Simpson side. You understand an interception. It was throwing the ball downfield. Uh, again, as we listed it earlier, was basically a punt for the Cats. But four fumbles in this ball game, including one on a kickoff right after the fumble return touchdown, that if it weren't for there being just about 30 seconds left in this opening half, uh, Adair County, their players wanted to go down and score again. Coach Stonebreaker said, nope, we're going to take this game in the half. We've got the running clock the rest of the way. If you're Franklin Simpson, knowing what this game is going to be the rest of the way, what are you trying to take away from this? Is the goal quite literally just get out of here with nobody hurt, move on? How do you try to come and address this second half to find whatever positives you can if there are any? Well, you can uh, go from it in a couple ways. You can think, okay, is there something in our offense that we haven't ran a lot that we can practice, maybe practice some of that shotgun but, you know, some of the shotgun formations, I don't know if that's going to be what they do. My, you know, if I were in that situation, you just you don't want anybody hurt. You're already – you can Blake blame Blake Pearson's banged yeah. up already. We, we've seen the injuries affect this yeah. team already early on this season. Jackson Crafton not playing tonight for the Wildcats. Donovan Dudley, he's going to be out for – uh, presumably the rest of the year after what happened in that game against Allen County, Scottsville. Thankfully, already had a successful successful surgery there. But as you mentioned, if you're the Cats, just come out, do what you can in the second half, take what you can from it, and yeah. try to walk out with nobody else hurt. Quickly yeah. looking at the stats from this opening half of play, Brady dealt two for six through the air, 19 yards in that interception. Both completions go to Kaysen Groves, who has 19 yards, and Probably the hardest fought 19 yards that you can try to reel in on two completions. Took his licks on yep. both those catches. But the big thing here, the lack of production on the ground for Franklin Simpson, just 56 yards on 21 carries. 25 of those yards coming on four runs from Brady Delk, who late in that half really was the life for the Cats. But the fumbles caught up to Franklin Simpson and derailed any hopes they had of stringing a drive together late in that opening half of play. On the other side, Lane grants the story. 13 carries, 142 yards, four touchdowns, around a 60-yard fumble return touchdown as well. They've only thrown it one time with the quarterback, Smith, who had a completion to Solomon Stonebreaker for 35 yards early on. And Adair County, since that point, has not looked back. They had that false or the delay of game to start the game. They got a five-yard run from Grant. They threw it over the top for 35 yards for Stonebreaker. And the offense has been humming since then. 162 yards rushing as a team. 
combine it with the 35 yards to the air, already almost 200 yards at halftime and could easily have more if not for the fumble being brought back for a touchdown by Grant. On the other side for Franklin Simpson, just 75 yards of offense and went a long stretch between that first drive and the last drive of the half without a first down. And that was a final drive that before that fumble, Tyler really felt like the Cats had finally pieced something together to get a little bit of momentum, would have the ball to start the second half, would prevent that running clock. But now find ourselves in a 35-0 hole. Yeah, they were moving. They had 13 plays on that drive and, you know, just fumbled twice and, you know, I mean, just Grant made an incredible play, just kind of picked that football up and took off and, uh, you know, the Deer County is taking advantage of every opportunity this game. I mean, there's no doubt about that. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll get you some scores from around the area. Our final thoughts at halftime as we get you set for What's going to be a quick second half of play from a Madera County High School. 35 to nothing is the score as Franklin Simpson trails it to the undefeated. And I think we can confidently. Time show 35 0. Adair County leads it over Franklin Simpson High. Tyler Eaton joined by Tyler Artiburn. Not the most fun part <laughs> of this job as we rally through what's going to be a running clock for the second half, but a lot of games going on around the area. It, it, it is not only locked in that I'm going to be the worst guest picker that Bowling Green Daily News has had this year, it's starting to look like I'm going to set an extremely low bar. Who, for whoever gets to trip over it next week. Because Logan County, who I picked to go in and make a statement against Greenwood, they're in a little bit of trouble. But I did pick ACS to defeat Glasgow, and that's at least got me in position to get my first one of the night. Tyler, give us an update on everything going on around the area. Uh, most of these scores are at halftime. Elizabethtown is down 12-21 to 21 against Hart County, Hart County being a district opponent. Grayson County leads district opponent Butler County 18 to 15 in a close back and forth game. Uh, Warren Central is down 29 to 8 against Warren East. Allen County Scottsville is up 18 to 7 on Glasgow. As you were talking about in that Greenwood Logan County game, Greenwood is surprising some being up 14 to 3 on surprising Logan County. Surprising me at least. Yeah. 
And then uh, the game next week for Franklin Simpson will be at Russellville. And right now the Panthers are down 14 to 10 against the Trig County Wildcats. That's going to be, as it is called, I've seen it referred to, uh, especially with Florida State early on in this college football season. It was tossed around a lot after their opening loss to Georgia Tech. That, that game against Boston College, they were calling a get-right game. And if you're Franklin Simpson, in theory, you look at the schedule, and this is not a bash on Russellville, but traditionally that would be a game that if you're FS, you view as a get-right game. But going on the road after a loss like this, I don't think you can afford to view anything in that vein if you're FS. No, Russellville is not the Russellville we've played the past couple of years. Now, they're not, I don't think they're Russellville that got to the state championship game in 2021. Uh, but they have some size. I was able to watch them against Warren Central getting ready for that game. Russellville, they're going to come to play. They got a, you know about seven or eight guys that can – they're just beefy players, and sometimes they put all of them on offense at the same time and just knock it down your throat. It looks like they just scored to go up 17-14 uh, against Trade County as that game rolled into half. So they're not going to be a pushover either. Nobody's going to be a pushover. Franklin Simpson's got to prepare for everybody. Now, as you look at the way that the schedule lays out for Franklin Simpson, it ends up being fairly favorable for a moment. You're, you're going to be favored to win uh, against Russellville regardless, but uh, like I said earlier, most people would have favored FS outside of the Columbia community to beat Adair County in this matchup. Then you get back home finally. Four of the first five games of this schedule have been away from home you finally get back home against Butler County for homecoming. You get a couple home games in a row that are really going to shape up to be must wins because then you go on the road for a battle against Hart and you're going to have to play a good Warren East team that has proven that they're kind of getting back to what we saw from them a couple of years ago. But for Franklin Simpson right now, the priority, get out of this game in the best shape that you can, down 35 to nothing at the break when we come back. We bring you the second half of action with a running clock the rest of the way between Franklin Simpson and Adair County. Here on 92.3 WFKN. Thank you, guys. I think they're feeling sorry for us. Franklin Simpson will start the second half with the ball, trailing 35 to nothing. By rule, running clock for the rest of this ball game. And looking back there at the returners, one of the things to watch, we talked about trying to get out of here as healthy as you can for Franklin Simpson. Blake McPherson went out with injury late in that first half. He is not back out there at returner for SFS. Probably the right move. I don't think it really tells us too much about his current condition. Colin Anderson and Brody Perry back there to return for the Wildcats as Adair squibs it up the middle. Alford grabs it, 
The mission here, hold on to the football, gets away from a lazy tackle at the 40. Spinning outside, drives through a man up across the 45 to the 46. And this has been the theme from this ball game. And I, I think it's going to be huge for Franklin Simpson to get the ball moving and make something happen on offense because just like against Allen County Scottsville, drive after drive, the Cats have started with great field position here at their own 47 again. Yeah, and you, you got to get something going. Uh, it looks like most of your starting offense is out there, so you got some subs in on defense, a couple, not many for Adair County. Still see a lot of the yeah, starters out there. Mostly. Delk's going to operate out of the shotgun to start this drive. Running clock down already to 11 minutes, 10 seconds left in the quarter. Takes the shotgun snap, hands it off to Anderson, running right. Cuts up field, runs into a tackle at the 49, and he's thrown backwards there. Gains a couple on first down. And that's uh, Rodgers on the tackle. And, you know, for Adair County, it's smart to play your – it looks like you're going to start subbing in one guy at a time. But, you know, for me, I mean, you'd almost want to play a, a full defensive – or a, a full second half because you haven't played a full game. Yeah, the point. last two games have been cut short. Yeah. So you at least want that conditioning, but – and even with this score, Franklin, one of the better offenses you're going to face is yeah. this time the Cats go up the middle again for a gain of two on the fullback dive. That was Aiden Jones that time. They'll mark him at the 49-yard line of Adair. And Franklin will have a third and six. As in there helping to make the play was big 6 2 three, 65, number 70, Jace Jones, who checks out for this play. But, man, he just plugs that middle of the field up there at nose tackle. Man, he's solid. He's got power. My goodness. Delk fakes the handoff up the middle, cuts it outside, hit, and the ball comes out again. Adair County thinks they have it. Is it the fifth turnover on a fumble of the night for Franklin Simpson? It is. They've already gotten the it is. for Adair County. The fifth fumble recovered at the 45-yard line of Adair County. The Cats have turned it over for a sixth time. Five of them, they've put the ball on the ground with a fumble. It's kind of different than last game. You had all kinds of interceptions, no fumbles. and We had six combined I mean. interceptions last game, three from Franklin Simpson, as I noted to you now, and we can tack on the one from this game for Brady. That's number six of the year. Franklin, just four interceptions all of last season. Did a really good job of winning the turnover battle. Had a dynamic defense that was top ten in the state and interceptions and fumbles as a big play comes in to start this drive defensively. Shooting into the backfield is Jackson Evans to create a negative play on the opening handoff. And I heard Jackson Evans was going to be playing a little bit more on defense at a defensive tackle but that was with the intention of Adair County being in a shotgun formation but whenever they went under center they took him out of the game plan and he had to come out but taking advantage of this opportunity now Adair County's got some several subs on offense looking like they're getting a freshman he can throw and looking in warm-ups he can throw the football but they have him in there at quarterback that's Braxton McKinney who we saw warming up before the game, potentially thought we might see some run for him at quarterback. Didn't know it would be in this situation as Musselman took that carry for a loss of three. They go back up the middle on second down. Might have gotten a yard. We'll see what the spot is. It looks like for the most part, Adair County is. I, I don't see a single starter out there, so they're getting a a JV offense in there and, and, and just trying to get some guys some game experience and try to keep their guys healthy. It's going to be really tough. I think if you're on the outside looking in, unless you're staring at the film, I, I think from a statewide standpoint to really see how special the season Lane Grant is having with all yeah. these games where he's only got stats from the first half. Mm -hmm. That's two weeks in a row, really three weeks in a row that's been the case. As on third and 13, it's just going to be a handoff up the middle to the fullback up near the original line of scrimmage. And Adair County will punt it away on fourth and 10. Now, punting, a lot of times your special teams, however, they remain your varsity guys because <laughs> most teams don't have a JV punt. So uh, you're sending guys back in there like snow, a stonebreaker to, to punt and 
Rodgers is going to be in there as a personal protector. And a lot of times at this point in the game, you struggle getting everybody on the field because, and that looks like what Adair County, they're just struggling to get people on the field for this punt. As they're actually here, it looks like they're going to go for it or – Tough to really tell what they're doing. Yeah. May take a timeout or just let the clock expire. And I believe that's what they're going to do is just intentionally take that delay of game, which had to be the case because Grant and Smith were over there just standing on the yeah. field chatting with their coach, Stonebreaker, who opts to take the penalty, walk back five yards, and then Grant, who also operates as the punter, will boot this one away. Yeah, so that's only the sixth play of – this quarter and we're halfway through, already so at six minutes left in the third quarter and i think he's just trying to run more clock Ford lane grant with his five touchdowns is the only chance he'll get to come out on the field for the rest of this game will be to punt it yeah. grant standing at his 25 yard line awaiting the snap it's a bit high but hops up and grabs it great punt down the left side it lands out of bounds but for someone who is so well known for how they run the football, he had one or the, his punt earlier, probably a bit shorter than he wanted it. But when he punts it, it looks like a punt should. I mean, he, he he's doing it all. It right has there. a nice My spiral goodness. to it. Good air time. He can do it all. And we'll see where they mark this ultimately. It's down inside the 35 of Franklin Simpson. And the Cats will take over around their own 32. The official is going to replace the ball real quick. There we go. And Franklin Simpson set to take over now offensively again. Delk back out there still with the starters. He's under center. Hands it off to Anderson going right. Cuts up field across the 35. Trying to bounce outside. Can't get the edge. Dragged down by the jersey at the 35-yard line. Grabbing on and not letting go was Deshaun Crowdis, who we talked about earlier. He's just got a nose for the ball. Yeah, he just, he, you know, he gets to the play and he's able to make some tackles and uh, somebody may have been asking for a horse collar. I don't know. I don't even know what horse collar looks like anymore. But, <laughs> um, the officials say that it's a clean play. Got up to the 34-yard line for a gain of six. And... Franklin's going to look to throw it here with Delk rolling to his right. Fires one down the sideline. It slips out of the hands of the receiver, and it's incomplete. That was some of the things I was talking about at halftime. You can throw the ball a little bit more in a running clock situation because it doesn't stop the clock, and it gives you an opportunity to work on things. Um, so uh, that's what Franklin Simpson elected to do there on the second down play. And now, as you noted, Adair County started to bring in, starting to bring in more of those substitutions defensively. I don't think they're gonna, they're not gonna bring in too many. They They've wanna, got, they want they got shutout. about a half and half here. As Delk sends a man into motion, now turns, hands it off up the middle. Anderson at the 40 runs over a man, gets up to the 43 yard line. Big gain of nine there on third down to keep the drive alive. And Anderson, yeah, you usually don't see him running over guys, but takes advantage of a young freshman on a Dare County <laughs> being on defense and runs over him on the play. Colin, over 100 yards on the ground against a Dare County last year, was the breakout star of that game. Only had 10 yards against Allen County Scottsville last week. They've Cats have really struggled to figure out how to get him going these last couple of games. And, Maybe that inside run is going to be the key to unlocking it. We see it work a couple of times. It's here. They pitch it outside to Alford. They're switching every roll as Lane breaks loose down the sideline. Gets past midfield. And now a fight breaks out, at least momentarily, a shoving match between him and the Adair County defender on the sideline. And way late, a flag is hurled up into the air from the sideline. Coach Stonebreaker waving for his guys to come over. And with 2.20 left in the third quarter of a running clock game, this is the last time you want to see something like that. And that, that was blatant. I mean, I, I say I don't know what a horse collar is anymore, but that was a horse collar, and it was out of bounds, and you got to – and they're stopping the clock to talk to the coaches. you got to call that one. I mean, that, 
I mean, that just looked dirty. At this point in the game, you want everybody to be healthy. I know Franklin Simpson's playing some more of their guys. Um, probably these seniors don't want to come out. You want to keep some good things going on offense. You don't want to, you know, get guys killed back there, so you're keeping your starters out. Uh, but you got to keep guys safe. And really good sportsmanship there is Colin Anderson leads his Wildcats up, shakes hands with a couple of Adair County players around the 45-yard line. It is going to be a penalty against Adair that walks it up to the 38 of the Indians. So Franklin Simpson moving it well this drive. The penalty moves it up 15 yards after what was a five-yard gain anyway outside for Alford. But the Cats here, an opportunity to try to put some points on the board. Like you said, Adair County on the, on the other side, they want to preserve this shutout. Delk under center, sends a man into motion, now hands it off to Jones going right side, barrels through the first wave of defenders across the 25 down near the 20. Yeah, and, uh, you got a little bit of life um, on the Franklin Simpson sideline. You know, not in a position you want to be in, but you still want to fight. And uh, that's what we're seeing with Aiden Jones on that play. 12-yard gain for Jones. If you look at the day overall for Franklin Simpson, that's just the fourth play to go for double-digit yardage. And they've not had a 20-yard play in this game. At, at Dare County defense, even with some of the subs in there, I mean, it, it, you know, they are solid. They are. Their defense well, and they go deep regardless. Solid. Yes, they rotate guys. First and 10, run up the middle, turns into an explosive play past the 10, down near the 5 for the Wildcats. Not quite able to punch it in, but, man, they're, they're still fighting, and they want to put points on the board. And if there's one player you know that wants to put points on the board... It's Lane Alford. And that, that's one of the types of plays that has consistently worked for Franklin Simpson this evening. It's the quick hitters to the fullback and even the uh, the quarterback sneaks. Those have been the most successful plays. And right there, Lane was able to take it for many yards. Nelk under center, 30 seconds left in the quarter. They send a man in the motion. They go up the middle. Do the Cats get the touchdown? They do. From five yards out, Franklin Simpson breaks. The shutout. There you go. Just good play. Hard nose run up the middle. Did you see who was able to score on that? I believe it was Lane. It was Lane or Aiden. We'll find out officially. <laughs> As both contributed to that drive. As the Cats break through with 22 seconds left in the third quarter. Brody McAllister out for the PAT. He's been perfect so far this season and remains perfect as it goes through. With 22 seconds left in the third quarter, 35-7. to seven, Franklin Simpson trails Adair County. You're listening to Wildcat Football on 92.3 WFKN. Back with you here at Adair County High with 22 seconds left in the third quarter. 35-7 to seven is the Adair County lead. As the Cats finally break through on a long, productive drive. It's aided by penalty, but the Cats finally able to punch it in from five yards out. And I think as we've been able to clear it up, we knew it was one of the two fullbacks that had that touchdown, Tyler. It looks like it was Aiden that punched it in. Yeah, his dad get mad at us. If we, we will got make it wrong. sure. Well, we'll clear it up forever. It's tough to tell from up here as 
Yeah. Please forgive us, As the Mike. cats are working to the left side of the field for us, we've got the double panel windows up, so it's hard to peek through there. Yeah. And they've got you walled off to where you can't. No, I can't see You can't see that side of the field regardless. Play, but pretty good view up here. I mean, it's a, uh, you know, we were really close to the action. And we were, we were done walking around on the field beforehand. It's a field that, as we've seen at Dare County, really take advantage of. If you get outside, you're running downhill. Literally. Uh, because it kind of slopes off from the middle of the field to each way. And there's definitely a home field advantage here of knowing this place, a natural grass field. How old, did, how old did you say this one was compared I, to the old one? I played on the uh, 2004. I know they were playing on the other field. Oh, there's personal fouls on both teams. I have no idea who that was on, when that was. It was after the kickoff. Oh, They've got the it. ball at the 35-yard line. That's where Adair County will take over, leading it 35-7. to seven. As the official rules... For the clock to run, but Coach Stonebreaker takes his players off the field, and they're going to take this thing in to the fourth quarter. We'll stay here as we just took a break. 35-7 to our score. Aiden Jones with the five-yard touchdown. The lone score of the day for Franklin Simpson. Coming at the end of that third quarter, it breaks a streak of back-to-back -back shutouts for an Adair County team that's only given up five points per game this season. That is the best mark in all of 3A. Yeah, I don't think uh, that one score is going to hurt their ranking too much. <laughs> Just a, you're saying a solid defense. I mean, they're and, – and Frank, you can – not trying to make excuses, but Franklin Simpson's down some guys and – key players and you know but nonetheless I mean at Dare County's defense man they are solid their offense is solid too we're talking about Grant I mean seems like a one man wrecking show but you got some good linemen blocking and I mean Grant's a solid player but de that defense there's not really any standouts they're just a solid defense all together Dare County rolls McKinney back out under center as we get this drive underway Franklin Still with most of their starters out there defensively trying to make the most of this ball game. It's a run up the middle to start the drive. That's number 25, Weston Abston, who gets outside across the 40. We'll see officially where they mark him out on that far side of the field. They're going to move the chains and give him a gain of 12 all the way up to the 47-yard line. And he's just a freshman. The running back is uh, Abston and you know, it's just good uh, experience for some of these younger guys for uh, Dare County. They don't get a lot of playing time, and, you know, their fans are enjoying it and seeing some of these guys getting some, their first varsity action because, like I said, I mean, the Caverna game ended in the third quarter. Uh, the LaRue County game ended at halftime. Uh, so, you know, they're able to get in there and get some playing time. It's a senior-heavy team, and a lot of those seniors play a lot. So, it's a good opportunity to get these backups an opportunity to play. As on the far side on a broken play, McKinney had to keep it. It looked like his back went one way. He wanted to hand it off another, kept it himself. Got across midfield all the way up to the 49 of Franklin Simpson. Looks like they're going to mark it. So a good gain of four on what should have been a loss. And Coach Stonebreaker is still coaching. He's a little upset on that play, even being up this much and 35 to 7 and a running clock, and he's uh, he's still upset that that, <laughs> that play didn't uh, go as he wanted to. And a Derrick County team seeking their first playoff win since 2016. Fell in the opening round in blowout fashion last season. Was much better than that. We know how good this district was last year as we get a run up the middle on second down here. Cats smother it this time. Patrick Moss leading the way for the Wildcat defense. And after a gain of two, we'll have a third and medium for Adair. And now you see Lane Alford come out of the game on defense. Don't know if we'll see him anymore on offense. And looks like Franklin Simpson starting to sub some guys as well. McKinney waiting under center, looking over to his sideline here. Play clock is at 18. Coaches motioning players into position. They finally get the wide receiver, Coomer, set up on the near side, and the catch jump. 
I see the the one of the wide receiver on Adair County's far side jump, but I guess they were just looking at the defense. And it's going to be the call. I actually, I think from hearing it, the Adair County radio crew thought it was the same thing. Yeah, uh, but and Adair County's calling a timeout. I think Coach Stonebreaker's a little upset as JV guys said, you've not been playing all game. And <laughs> Why are you not focused? Just finish this game out. We're running simple stuff. I mean, and this is your opportunity when you're in that position. You want to earn some more playing time. This is when you do it. Yeah, I mean, you know, just, you know, this isn't a time to just take it easy. Uh, you know, you're subbing guys in. Looks like Franklin Simpson subbing uh, some guys in as well. You've seen some new guys in that we've not seen all game on defense. and um, But, yeah, this is both sides. I mean, I, I've seen it multiple games where you, you, you get young guys in, you get subs in, and they're able to make plays. And then later on in the year, like, okay, let's start putting them in position to play um, as the year goes on. So, I mean, this is not, you know, for, you know, at the end of the game, wins, losses, this game, it doesn't really matter as much. But later on as the season goes on, you know, these minutes do matter. Franklin Simpson will fall to – 0 and 11 under Coach Cheney when giving up at least 30 points. A number that was added to against Allen County Scottsville last week is on a run up the middle. Adair gets a big gainer from the 43 down inside the Franklin Simpson 35 yard line. They may mark it just short of the first down at the 34. They do. But regardless, after that timeout, that Indians JV squad came out fired up. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, they're not backing down. And this is more, maybe they were intimidated by all the varsity players for Franklin Simpson. And that's the reason why they weren't doing good. Now they have more JV. And there's still some varsity guys out there for Franklin Simpson, but a little bit more evenly matched. They've, on the, they've got a coach on the sideline who is working with the quarterback, McKinney, who gives it up the middle here for another big gainer inside the 30-yard line. A pickup of seven on the ground. They've got a coach waiting or having McKinney wait until the play clock is down around five seconds to run off as much of this thing as they can. Yeah, Dare County's just trying to – we'll see if that affects him later on as – they're in a close game and maybe against Hart County or Glasgow or uh, somebody later on that's able to give them a, a fight. We'll see, uh, you know, if, if they're able to play four quarters with their varsity guys because um, you know, they have it to this point except their first game. Back under center, first and ten. Inside the 30. This time the quarterback, McKinney, is going to keep it himself. Gets outside past the 20 and pushed out of bounds. Near the 15. Boy, he's got some wheels for just a freshman. Yeah, and I, I thought, you know, with, with Jesse being hurt and before the game. Watching him warm up. Yeah, it's watching him warm up. You know, you probably didn't want Grant at the, the quarterback. You wanted him at running back. So who was the quarterback going to be? And I thought, you know, McKinney looked like a player. So, you know, this isn't going to be a district game going forward. But for Adair County, uh, well, that's a name that they're going to be hearing as the years go on. Aiden Smith, the senior, I, I wonder if he's the one to fill in the rest of the way this season. Did a fantastic job. I don't see any reason to change it. Only had the one pass, but it was a perfect one to yeah, Stonebreaker down the sideline. He showed that he passed when he can pass when he needs to. But McKinney clearly capable as he steps back under center. First and 10 at the Franklin Simpson 15-yard line. Run going left, escaping the first tackler and sliding down around the five is Riker Musselman. What a name. <laughs> Musselman. And since Franklin Simpson made those defensive subs, Adair has really started to move the ball. They've got a first and goal, it looks like, at the four. And Franklin Simpson's going to try to hold them, but uh, not get any more scores. But they're just going to keep trying to fight with these young guys. Inside six minutes left. To Adair County's credit, as we mentioned, they're not trying to run this thing up yeah. or anything. They're running that clock down before every play, which – it be really tough as a defense to have to sit there and wait so yeah. long, especially with the anticipation and 
everything that kicks when in when you finally get to go out there and you're on the field as Musselman takes the handoff going left and he trots in for six. So somebody besides Grant scores. And after I noted in the pregame that if Allen County had a kicker, they would have broken 40. Yeah. Unable to in that game. Adair County does it and becomes just the fourth team to do it since Max Cheney became the head coach here at Franklin Simpson in his fifth season. And this has been a much different game than that Allen County Scottsville game. Whereas that one felt like a back and forth battle. This one has felt like a knockout. Yeah. 42 to seven, Adair County now leads it as the PAT is good. We'll take another break when we come back. Franklin Simpson has what will likely be their final drive of this running clock matchup. You're listening to Wildcat Football on 92.3 WFKN. Uh, we can do 30. Collins back to a turn. Under four minutes left in the ball game as the clock rolls on here at Adair County High School. 35 point lead for Adair after the four yard touchdown run for Musselman. The junior listed as a receiver, but getting some run at running back late in this ball game in relief of starred Lane Grant, who will finish the day in just a half of play with 13 carries for 142 yards, four touchdowns, and we've still yet to see not only what he is capable of in a full game at that running back spot, but now with it, go it's going to be a run first offense without Jesse and Smith, the replacement in there at quarterback. If he gets a full game, he is going to put up numbers as the Cats recover the kickoff on a rolling effort at the 40-yard line, and they'll take over there. Yeah, just a 140-whatever yards. It doesn't tell the story of how dominant he's been. I mean, you hardly ever say that somebody get 140 yards. He seems much more dominant than that. Had the fumble return touchdown, and that's going to be the story. And I, I know for Coach Chaney, that's going to be the message he said that the number one mission today was to make good decisions and play sound football. An interception and five fumbles lost. Yeah, I, I don't know when you would see the last time a Franklin Simpson football team lost five fumbles in a game. Yeah, it, not a good situation, not a good position to be in. Uh, but it looks like Franklin Simpson's coming out here with the JV offense as well. And they're going to move him up to the Adair County 43-yard line. As you mentioned, JV offense out there for the Wildcats. Run going over to the left side of the field. Doesn't quite get back to the line of scrimmage. That's Xavier Hampton on the carry over on the left side. You got Liam Hines, he has the quarterback, freshman quarterback playing for Franklin Simpson. Zay's one of those players that you look at as filling out his body is the next step. And when he gets there, whatever role they find for him, yeah. I mean, he's, he's going to be a key contributor. He's been starting corner, and I believe we would have yep. seen him run more if he wasn't playing so much defense. Correct. Offensively, he's got potential to him. As here, they'll run it up the middle, across the 45, up near the 40-yard line. That's number 14, oh, Thomas McClure getting his first varsity carry. Another freshman. Always fun when you get those first carries in varsity, those first opportunities. You hate when it's in situations like this yes, and you're not on the other side of it. But yeah, he, I mean, looks like he's ready to play in there. Ran over his own guy that was in his way. One fifteen left in this ball game. It's a third and twelve for Franklin Simpson. They're going to look to throw it here. Hines in trouble. 
Flushed out to his left side. Now pushed out of bounds around the 35. Was a good five-yard gain and a heads-up play to make with really nothing downfield. And Hines, he's able to run the ball. He's a baseball player as well. Can absolutely sling it. I doubt he'll get an opportunity here tonight, but looks like he's uh, from eight. I coached him in eighth grade. Looks like he's become a better runner as well. It was looked like a design throw there. We'll see if the Cats try to again here on fourth down. Only need a yard, though, on what should be the final play of this game. As he takes the snap, pitches it out to the far side to Zay, cuts up field. Working down the sideline, gets around one defender and is tackled, but picks up the first down on the final play offensively for this Franklin Simpson offense. That'll do it from Adair County High. It was a running clock from the half. Five first half touchdowns for senior superstar Lane Grant. Four on the ground, and he returns a fumble to the house as Adair County. Moves to 4-0 on the season. They avenge the loss at Franklin.